So I took a little bit of piloncillo. This is a sugar, local uh, sugar. And I have two jars here, both of which have the diced up mushroom in it. The difference is that this one has a regular amount of piloncillo. That's a fairly small amount for the, the amount of water. And this one has much more. And the goal here is to see uh, what the proper level is. We're about to do uh, a bunch of more experiments that have controls and, and are tried to done a little bit uh, more scientifically. But this will give me a basic idea of the direction we should be heading um, with this, this particular mushroom. Uh, after we find out generally what the right levels are, we'll have to uh, test, uh, like, uh, do different mushrooms want different amounts of things? If you look in uh, Paul Stamets' books on mushroom propagation, you'll find each mushroom is fairly particular. They like all sorts of different picky stuff. But I think most of the mushrooms uh, that we're dealing with will we'll probably do okay with approximately the, the same amount of sugars. Uh, since that's an early part of the process. When you get into something like artificially creating fruiting bodies and everything, then you get into, uh, you know, exactly how much humidity it wants and what cycles and all kinds of issues with nutrients and everything. But we're not trying to deal with any of that because we're doing this in a, in a food forest kind of way. All we want to do is, is take the mushrooms that are already here, propagate the mycelia, and then put them back out. Uh, that'll help the forest continue to recover, and also we can kind of selectively... Uh, um, promote the ones that we especially like. Uh, one of the ones, we've, it's just coming out now, I have a report that there's some uh, a little further away, uh, of the Boletus edulis, one of the best mushrooms in the world. And it's, uh, it's uh, very tasty, it can be dried, it's a good product. And right now on the property here we have, I don't know, I saw four or five, maybe six, seven, eight last year. And uh, if we propagate it, it could be that we can have hundreds of them at one part of the year. And this would be mushroom propagation without a roof, without a centrifuge or sterilizing things or all the complex things. And uh, these kind of tiny experiments, poorly done uh, with non-sterile equipment, will actually help us uh, kind of do mushroom propagation in, in a way that a caveman, who was also a scientist, might do. <laughs> actually, that's probably what I am. But uh, anyway, simple science, and hopefully there'll be great mushroom successes.